The Gulfstream Park Mile is a grade two, and it's the 11th race on Gulfstream Saturday card. It's running a mile, of course, for four-year-olds and up. And we do have to remember, Gulfstream, this is a one-turn mile. And this is an interesting race. So we look at this field, and we see quite a few from the Fred Hooper, and most notably uh, Castle Chaos and Tumba Rumba, uh, who we uh, we picked up to win that one. And we were we were paid. It was nice. Uh, Gilmore was in that race as well, though he didn't do a whole lot, as well as Steel Sunshine, the late runner. And then we can throw in Il Miracolo, uh, we remember from the Derby Trail last year, who has uh, improved a, a fair amount since uh, since his early uh, going. And he did win in an allowance uh, at a one-turn mile here last year prior to the Belmont. We take a look at the field. We'll go through them. Uh, notice right off the bat, there is no confirmed front runner in this race. And that makes for a very interesting race shape. Um, I'm going to guess mainly because I think Il Mericolo probably wants more ground than this being a gun runner. And he's been running primarily at two turns. Uh, that uh, they're going to put him on the lead. And uh, I think he's more than capable. He certainly has the class uh, to win this race. and uh, But I think likely, uh, given his running style in uh, the field, I think he'll probably be on the lead and, and he'll try to wire it. Tumba Rumba ran a big one last time. And this is a horse who's definitely improving. Um, and uh, he is progressing. It's, he's coming in third off the layoff. And uh, I believe that's a 30% angle for his trainer. So, or any place that's 29%. But uh, this one's in very good form. The only thing I would say is I'm just wondering if, if that was uh, uh, a pretty big peak effort last time. And maybe there's a little bit of letdown here. But he's certainly one to consider in this field. Uh, Shaq Diesel hasn't run at a class level commensurate with this. And I just don't think he's good enough. So he's a toss. Ticking is interesting. And for a couple of reasons, you go back in this one's form and he ran a huge race. He got a 99 Brisnet figure uh, and it, last year, but he tailed off considerably after that. And it was obviously a bounce and it took three or four starts. Um, he has come back this year. His first start was still off the bench. Wasn't that great. But then the last one, he ran a really solid race at 40 to one and what I think that signals is a horse who's rounding back into form, getting back to that uh, really good race. You do have to wonder if um, coming into after that one, the pattern being uh, a bounce off a big race, if maybe that's possible. But also, uh, being older, he could be rounding back into form and ready to run a big one. So ticking is very interesting. He's certainly going to get a price, and I think he's won – that you have to include in the mix. I'm not sure he's quite good enough at this point to win it, but he's very intriguing value-wise. Uh, Castle Chaos, at six years old, he ran the race of his life last time. And uh, at six, I'm not expecting, uh, coming second off the layoff, that he'll be able to replicate that. So I think regression is likely with him, so I'm not going to use him. Plus, I think the price is going to be too short in a race that I think you have to have value uh, this is a pretty good betting race. Witt has been running on turf uh, for quite a few starts, but he did start on dirt and he did run well on it. Uh, I think it's uh, this is the kind of field and the kind of race that uh, that I think that he becomes very competitive and he's sort of laying in the weeds a little bit. And I think hopefully you'll get a somewhat of a price. Uh, it is Pletcher and Rod Ortiz, but Wit to me is intriguing and one I think that we certainly want to use. Gilmore, you just can't trust. Uh, that that last race was uh, really weak. He didn't do very much running. And this horse just always disappoints. I don't want any part of him. Maybe he'll come back. Uh, but, you know, with Tyler Gaffleyon aboard, uh, which is interesting uh, in itself that uh, uh, I forget who he ran with in the Fred Hooper, but he jumped off to come here. Uh, but I am I just can't trust him, and I, I'm not going to use him. Still Sunshine, we know what he's going to do. He's going to come from the back, and uh, the problem is I don't think he's going to have a lot of pace to run to. He's certainly in excellent form, and he could very well get uh, – uh, he could win this race under the right circumstances. I just don't think he's going to have them, but he's absolutely one you have to include in your mix for sure. 
Uh, so we look at our wagering strategy. I'm going to use WED as the value play. Uh, I could be very persuaded to use ticking as well. Uh, you'll probably get a better price with him. Uh, use your discretion, but uh, if you can get a really nice number on ticking, go for it. Why not? But I think wit is a little more logical, and so I'm going to use him. We're going to key box using Il Miracolo as our primary win candidate. So we'll use him four on top with two, three, five, and seven in the key box. And then we're going to box two, four, and five uh, as well. And I may uh, be a game time decision, but I may box uh, four, five, and seven. Uh, I leave that up to you. How uh, you know if you get a really enticing price, I think it's worth it in this type of race. Now in the trifecta, I'm fairly certain that Still Sunshine is going to be in the money without a doubt. So let's back key because we're not overly certain about the winner. So let's go two four seven two four five seven on with the three uh, Still Sunshine back keyed for second and third. And uh, I think that may uh, offer us the best chance to cash. Uh, but this is a very wide open race. And I do not think it's cast in stone that Tumba Rumba is going to come back and repeat. I'm banking on Il Miracolo taking the lead and just wiring it. And on class, uh, and certainly on the stamina end, uh, we'll hope that he can take it down.